Welcome, I'm Jim Harold. Many times on our podcasts and now our videos, we talk about haunted objects, things that seem to carry something a little extra with them. We're going to talk about that tonight. Could an object, specifically a painting, be so haunted that it could cause bodily harm? Well, we'll find out momentarily. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Harold. This is the Jim Harold Campfire Deep Dive, where we take a classic campfire story, this one very new but still very classic. We have the storyteller come on and appear and tell it to us again. A twist, we go a little deeper with it, and also your questions. And tonight we're so glad to have with us Amy, and she's going to talk to us about her experience, uh, what happened, and... Uh, Basically, what happened with this haunted object? Amy, welcome to the program tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jim. Thank you. Well, good to have you on the show. Now, let me ask you this. Um, tell people the haunted object that we're talking about. I'm going to bring it up on the screen, first of all. What Describe what we're seeing here. So this is a painting that I purchased it from a thrift store in 2018 um, and I was on your show recently and I told a story about how it uh, is haunted and <laughs> brought me a lot of bad luck and harm and poltergeist activity and all kinds of stuff. Now, we what do you want to mention? We're not saying, and, and Amy, I think you'll agree, we talked about this beforehand, Um it's one of those situations we're not really saying that it's the original painting or the artist or anything, but the particular print, right. the particular copy you had, you thought brought something with us. So with that, I'll let you go ahead and tell your story and, and take it from the top and tell people what happened. Sure. Uh, so in 2018, uh, I was getting a new roommate. And uh, we decided that we were going to go to the thrift store. Uh, we went to Salvation Army, which, uh, if you are not from America, is a major thrift store uh, around here. And um, we were looking for furniture. And so I like to go and look at the paintings and artwork usually when I go thrifting because sometimes they have really cool frames. And so if I don't like the artwork, I'll just take the art out and keep the frame. So I was looking through the paintings and at the very back, I see this painting, um, which you just saw. And as you can tell, it's very creepy, very scary. It immediately gave me a weird vibe, but I love creepy stuff. I love weird stuff. Um, so... I knew it kind of had to come home with me. I felt like really drawn to it. And uh, I showed it to my roommate and she said, absolutely not. This is not coming with us. <laughs> um, but Smart woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she knew from the beginning this was not a good idea. Um, but uh, I, you know, ta she was moving into my place. So I you said, it shots. doesn't matter. It's right. It's coming home with us. So we bring it home and almost immediately we felt an energy shift in the apartment. And that very day, one of our friends, um, who's a photographer, she came over and she was, um, just like taking pictures around our house. She had her Polaroid with her and when she walked in her house, she saw the painting and she, you know, was like, what is that? I don't like that. Um, she immediately got the vibe from it, too, that there was something not right about it. So, you know, she's taking pictures and the first picture she takes of the painting develops black. There's nothing in it. It just doesn't develop at all. Um, and then the second picture she takes uh, develops with orbs all around. Oh the my! Painting. Yeah, and I don't. I've never seen orbs in a Polaroid. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I've seen them, you know, on digital cameras and different things like that. But 
Sure. So, um, yeah. So immediately just from it being in our apartment, we started feeling a little weird, a little off. But again, I just kept brushing it off. You know, it, I'm like, it's fine. It's really creepy. I had a really creepy dining room that was like Haunted Mansion themed. So I just thought it would be perfect and fit perfectly. So the first thing that started kind of happening was we started noticing that our lights started flickering in the apartment. Um, this never happened before. It hadn't happened since after afterwards. Uh, so I knew that that was something definitely um, to take note of. I still, you know, wanted to be think that maybe it was like a short circuit or whatever. But when it's every light, every lamp, you know, something is off. Something's weird. Um, so after maybe like a couple days, um, my roommate came up to me, I woke up in the morning and she said something really weird had happened to her the night before that she had got up to go to the bathroom. And when she went back to walk to her bedroom, she heard footsteps behind her, like these really fast, quick footsteps, like do, 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 do. So mm. <laughs> she, um, said she was just she just noped out and just slammed her door and didn't even want to <laughs> investigate investigate you know whatever um so that very night we were um waiting i was waiting to take her to the airport because she had a very early flight in the morning so we decided that we were just gonna stay up all night until i had to take her around like four o'clock in the morning so we're sitting in the living room we're watching television and out of the corner of my eye, I see this movement in the dining room where the painting was. And I look up and I see this shadow thing. It, it wasn't even human shape. It was vaguely human shaped, but um, it was really skinny and like hunched over and it ran at us in while we were sitting on the couch and it did like exactly what she described. It went like did, 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 really fast, like hunched ooh, over. Ooh, chills. Yes. <laughs> and um I jumped out of my seat. I jumped into her lap. <laughs> she had no <laughs> idea what was going on. I'm like crying. I'm, you know, I'm shaking. I'm like, I just saw this crazy creature shadow thing. And, you know, she basically is like, we listen, you, you got to get rid of this painting. And I'm like, look, you're going away. It's going to be fine. Um, it, you know, I'm going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Again, this painting, I just, I couldn't get rid of it. I didn't want to get rid of it, you know, even. So you, you felt like, happened. despite all this, you felt an attachment to this painting. You're like, yeah, there's some weird stuff happened, but I love this painting. Was that basically your feeling? Yes. yes. Um, I liked the idea that weird stuff was happening almost, mm -hmm. but it was getting to the point now where a few lights flickering is fine. Um, right. Shadow creatures darting at me at three o'clock in the morning, we're getting into not so fine. So um, anyways, she goes to the airport and now I'm scared because I'm in this apartment by myself. Um, and I actually had posted on the virtual campfire about this experience I had with the painting and the shadow creature running at me and one of your listeners had told me that it to get rid of it and that things are only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish I would have listened to him. <laughs> um, so about maybe two days later, I um, was in my kitchen and I was making soup and I was boiling it on the stove, like heating it up. And I decided that I was going to eat it in the living room in front of the TV watching something. Um, 
So I took the soup off the stove. I mean, it was like boiling, boiling hot. And, you know, I had my little pot holders. I was holding the bowl and I walked down the hallway and I walk past the painting and right in front of the painting, I trip and oh. I dump this boiling hot soup on myself. And I'm like laying under this painting. I'm screaming. I am severely injured. And honestly, when it was happening, I didn't even put two and two together that it could have even been something to do with the painting. Right. But afterwards, looking back, you know, I'm like, I've never tripped in my dining room before. I've never tripped since. I've never injured myself that badly. There's no reason for this to have happened. All of these things happening at the same time, you know, it was just, it was really bizarre. And I, you know, like I, I still have all of these scars from this injury and I'm, I probably will for the rest of my life. Um, you know, I had to go to the emergency room. I, it was, it was terrible. Um, so my, that happens and, um, my roommate comes home, um, a couple days later and we have another friend over that, uh, is just brought me a care package. You know, I'm, I'm bandaged. I'm on our couch. I'm hanging out and, you know, we're all hanging out there and, we're telling her about the painting, our friend, and the lights start flickering again. And, you know, she is like, she's like, no way, this can't, you guys are talking, you guys are doing something, you know, like this, this can't be. And we're like, no, this is really happening. This is, this, something is going on with this thing. And um, so she gets up to go to the bathroom and as she's walking by, I have a guitar that is uh, on the wall, like leaning up against the wall next to the painting. Right. And this guitar just explodes into pieces. Whoa. I mean, in pieces. <laughs> and there's and just And that just doesn't, thing. I mean, guitars don't typically just explode of their own volition. Doesn't happen. Uh, no, I've never seen one before. And I, you know, I, and, you know, we, she did the same thing I did when I saw that shadow thing. She jumped out of her skin. She ran back to us, jumped on the couch. We're all screaming. We're shaking, you know, and that was finally like the final straw of we're done with this painting. We need to get it out of our house. Um, you know, it, 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 it has caused me harm. We, it is, you know, we're seeing like non-humanoid creatures. Um, it's blowing up my personal belongings. You know, there's poltergeist activity. This is, this is not, this is not good. And it, and it escalated very quickly. It was within like a week's time, pretty much. Um, so we saged our whole apartment that night. We took it outside. We put it outside. We got rid of it. Um, but again, I could not throw it out. I couldn't put it in a dumpster. I couldn't put it in the trash. I felt like it just couldn't be in my house, but I had to keep it. Very So weird. you felt like this irrational this irrational attachment to it that made no sense. Yes. Um, we actually ended up taking it to uh, our work because um, uh, where we worked, it was a restaurant with a lot of different weird like stuff on the walls. Kitschy and kind of stuff. Was, yeah. And so it was around Halloween. And so we thought, oh, let's hang it up there and then like put a little sign and say like, oh, haunted painting or something. Um, so it lived there for a while. Uh, and then one day when I was at work, I was walking by like the kitchen and I saw it in a box to go down to the trash. And I 
again freaked out and like grabbed it and i i just couldn't i couldn't you part with it. it i couldn't put it in the trash i, I so guess it seems like I it almost know. had like like an irrational hold on you it doesn't make sense i mean no offense but it, it doesn't I mean, make it, any sense no it doesn't and it's i mean there's it i mean there was a million reasons why i should have gotten rid of this thing and um you know even when we even when i took it back my roommate's brother said he wanted it and i said no he can't have it so where is the painting now <laughs> what what ended up, up, up happening to it well now he does have it because <laughs> i gave in and i said i mean i i, I kind of let it go um right. I was moving to a new place and I, I just didn't want to bring it here. I wanted, you wanted a fresh, fresh slate, so to speak. Yes. Um, so he, he actually has it now. So we, we shipped it to him. And that's where so. we got that picture from that one that we got, because I didn't want to take one offline yeah. because there's always this right stuff. So you were kind enough to forward that from him. And again, I want to mm -hmm. say this, make this very clear. This is no negative thing towards this artist, nothing about this specific painting. I'm sure if you bought a print of this, you'd be absolutely fine. No problem. Right. You think if I understand correctly, Amy, you think that there was just this actual copy, maybe it was the frame, it was carrying some bad energy with it. Is that right? Yeah. I just think it, I, yeah, because this, I mean, it wasn't an original painting. It was a print, um, you know, so I just think it was, yeah, the, the copy, the, the frame, whatever place it came from, uh, had something I think attached to it. You know, I never thought about this until I got to interview John Zaffis a couple of times, the haunted collector who uh, yeah. looks at these kind of things and it's hearing stories kind of like yours. And I've heard about different stories. I used to like to go to thrift stores and I'm like, Oh, how cool this old thing. It's groovy. It's neat. Yeah. Uh, and now I kind of think twice, first of all, because my wife hates old stuff. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but secondly, because I do wonder, you know, what if somebody had this thing that looks very innocuous, but it had some bad energy, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's, uh, it's just, uh, you don't know where something came from. It was interesting. I was talking to Zaphis and I mentioned when I was a little kid, my uh, parents uh, got this house and it had this real ornate old diploma. If you remember like diplomas they made like in the twenties and it would have this mm -hmm. real elaborate script and I was terrified of it as a kid. And I mentioned this to him and he said, you know, it might not have been the look of it that scared you. Maybe there was something attached to that. And I'm like, Ooh, I never thought of that. You know, and they, they oh, ended up getting yeah. rid of it or whatever, but it, it's just one of those things. I know, like I have a pocket knife that belonged to my late grandfather. And when I touch that, I mean, I feel him now it could all be psychological, but I do think mm -hmm. if you're around an object enough and, you know, like a pocket knife you would carry in your pocket on a regular basis or a painting that would be in your house. If you had positive, you may, you know what, you might have gotten a copy of that painting and you would have had great blessings. You know, if it had good energy attached to it, it just happened to have bad right. energy. But I believe, I believe that's possible. I think that's a thing. I don't think that's made up. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so too. I, I, I'm not really sure exactly what it what it was but you know you're totally right there's objects that bring people luck you know why can't there be objects that bring people bad luck you know well let's um, open it up to uh, some comments uh, i'm sorry to interrupt i'll just uh, real quick start bringing in your comments and your questions for amy and uh, amy continue i'm sorry oh uh yeah no i just agree with you i actually um got offered uh to purchase a haunted typewriter recently and after this whole scenario that happened to me i had to politely decline <laughs> um uh some this guy uh found a typewriter in a garbage can in a graveyard uh in pristine condition and asked me if i wanted to purchase it after uh hearing about my haunted painting um, situation. And, um, I said, no, thank you. 
(laughs) (laughs) Sylvia would want to know, she says she's not sure how to phrase this question, but do you still think about the painting? Do you still have that urge to have it? Uh, Yeah, I think about it all the time. Um, I, I have dreams about it. I I do have the urge to have it. It was really hard for me to give it away. Um, Mm. But I almost feel like if I wanted it back, I could take it. (laughs) I don't know. But I don't think I'd ever want it back. I just, I don't, I... I think hey, it's a word of advice, I would stay as far away as possible. It just doesn't seem to go. It doesn't. Now, has your uh, friend's brother, uh, have they had any problems with it, any weirdness surrounding it? Um, He said he hasn't had anything happen yet. Good. Uh, he said, however, it is very close to a old, um, I think he said it was a Christian exorcism book that he mm. has from like an ancient book that he got um so he and he's a counterbalance it kind of evens yes, it out he thinks so <laughs> he thinks it's kind of evening it evening itself out um and then he said it did get lost it actually got lost in the mail um for a few weeks as well so he doesn't know, but he did. Well, say I don't know if that's supernatural with our mail service these days, but uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. we got a um, Christmas card from like December the other day, but, uh, but no, no, maybe that had something to do with it. I'm just joking. Uh, Anna says when I was little, my grandma had this wooden face hanging on the wall in one room. Creep me out. Never thought about it as haunted, but now who knows? Let's see. Yeah. Who else do we have here? Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. Uh, Phil wants to know, and this is a good question. Uh, he's wondering if perhaps something was hidden behind the print in the frame, like a sigil or something that attracts a certain entity. So maybe it wasn't, you know, the painting at all. Maybe there was something behind the print. Did you ever open it up and see what was in it? I did not. That's a that good is something. Yeah. That's a great <laughs> question. Be interesting if uh, if you want to delve deeper, uh, if your friend would want to look and see. I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm sure he'd here. probably be into it. Uh, oh, I want to thank Sylvia for a super sticker, $5. So thank you so much uh, for your contribution. I always joke, uh, the the podcasts are the business, the, the videos where we actually don't make money, we spend money <laughs> with all the equipment and stuff. So, so we will take... Uh, We'll take everything that uh, we can get. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia. No, seriously, we appreciate it. Uh, Let's see here. I'm looking for more uh, questions. Give us your questions and your comments. I would certainly appreciate, obviously, keep uh, keep them uh, nice and polite. Uh, podcastage Bandrew, the best microphone reviewer on YouTube. He says, you're quickly becoming my coast to coast. Thank you. That's great company. Uh, just with great video, keep up the great work. And he says that you're glad you're okay now. So thank you very much, Bandrew, for the kind words. Um, do you still go after vintage objects? Do you still shop at thrift stores and that kind of stuff, or has this sworn you off of it? Oh no, that's all I, that's all I do. Um, I, I was going to say, I think I have always been able to sense and see things ever since I was a little kid. And I've been told by several mediums and psychics that I, I have two specific spirits that follow me around all the time that are always with me and that I also um, to other spirits almost seem like I have like she said it looks like my aura is like police lights like spirits are drawn to me because they think I can help them because they know that I can sense them or see them so I was thinking that might be another reason why something from this painting was more drawn to me or trying to attach itself to me because I'm more open and vulnerable to that. 
Chikova but, says the uh, figures in the painting remind me of the spirits that came out of Michael's mirror. We did uh, the story with uh, Michael's mirror. That was, I thought that was an interesting kind of juxtaposition with your story, you know, and again, maybe it wasn't the mirror. Maybe it's the frame. Who knows? I thought that too, actually, when I first heard the mirror story, I pictured the people in my painting coming out yeah. of his mirror. Yeah. Partying, saying we came with the mirror. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And then Michael is here too. Great interview. Thanks, Jim. And thank you so much, Amy, for sharing this with us. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. Have you ever tried getting in touch with the artist? Someone earlier said that uh, that he's still with us. And uh, is that something you've ever considered? It is not, but I totally will now. I'm sure he would be really interested in. Um, yeah, I, I think as long as you said, I'm not accusing. <laughs> I'm just saying this. Right. Way. I'm not accusing your artwork right. of summoning demons, but right. Right. <laughs> uh, right. yeah, I think, I, I think that would be interesting. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure he would be interested. He seems a lot of his art is, you know, very dark. So yeah, it does seem it like I like, was looking at some stuff online and it kind of is along a similar theme and it does seem to be very, very spooky indeed. Yeah. Uh, the two wind boys says, is there any information on the creature that you and your roommate saw in your house? Do you have any other information on that creature or any thoughts on that? You know, I've never experienced anything like I've never seen all of the, the, the things that I've ever seen have been more like a human. Um, I've never seen anything that looked like that or, you know, that was a shadow kind of bent over weird like that. It almost reminded me of like a small, if anybody has seen the movie Sinister, um, like a smaller version of the creature in, in that movie, um, that, you know, it has a head and arms and legs, but it's really skinny and tall and lanky. Um, and it was just too small to be like a person, you know? Um, but I, I've never, I haven't looked into it or really researched it because I just assumed it was some non-humanoid bad entity. I'm not sure, you know? Did the painting make any of your friends believers in the paranormal? Yes, definitely the girl who saw the guitar explode. <laughs> she cannot explain that. She's, you know, and she's a musician. She's a guitar player. Um, you know, she said she's never in her life seen seen anything like that. Um, you know, I had another friend who... I kept telling him about this painting and, you know, he kept telling me, oh, you're crazy. You know, it, it, paintings can't be haunted. And as soon as he stepped in my apartment, he took one look at it and he goes, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about here. But Question. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, um, it definitely has had many, many people <laughs> have believed now. Yeah. I guess if you would see a guitar exploding, that would do it. <laughs> yeah. mean, like, okay. let me out of here. Let me out of here. Uh, question mm -hmm. for Amy. Do you think you should seek some sort of release or spiritual exercise to banish the irrational connection to the painting? Mm, I have actually tried um, to do a little bit of this, and I think it's honestly why I was able to let it go. Um, cause I have done some spiritual work and some cleansing work and I've had some people work, uh, on me as well, doing some cleansing work. And, um, you know, even, even after I recorded, um, for the campfire and probably after I'm going to record this, I'm probably going to, you know, do some saging and kind of clear the, clear the energy. Um, Cause it was a really, really dark time, uh, yeah. in my, in my life. And, um, I just don't want any of that energy lingering. Um, but as far as it, 
being in my dreams and me still dreaming about it, I don't know. I can't, I don't know if I can control that, but I can try. Sleep with a crystal under my pillow or something. <laughs> Does anyone still have the Polaroids your friend took of the painting with the orbs? Yes. So if you go to the virtual campfire uh, on Facebook, I did post the Polaroids. Um, so my name is Amy Nicole Gonzalez. If you look for me as a um, user, you should be able to see all of my posts. And if you want to go to the virtual campfire group, uh, easy URL for it is virtualcampfiregroup.com. That'll take you to the Facebook group. And uh, you just go in and uh, we, uh, uh, we basically approve you should it be a situation if you're a legitimate accountant and so forth. So uh, let's see here. Uh, have you ever tried an EVB recording or spirit box session near the painting? Yes, we did. Also, hi, Cindy. That's my friend, Cindy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I have, uh, we, this was, so I, I have a lot of ghost hunting equipment now, but this was back when I just was using, you know, those ghost hunting apps on your phone. So you can't be, you know, too sure of what's true and what's not true on those ghost hunting phone apps. Um, but we did, and um, we did get a few responses from a woman and her name was Eileen. I, I remember, um, but it wasn't anything significant. It wasn't, you know, anything worth noting or talking about. So I'm not sure how, how true it was. Um, what has surprised you about all of this? I, I mean, is there anything that surprises you? Has this come of a shock to you that this happened to you or that you're still interested in this painting? Yeah, I mean, of all the things that have ever happened to me, this is definitely the biggest, most significant thing that has happened. Um, you know, like I said, I was really injured and... Um, I'm going to have those scars on my body for the rest of my life. So um, this has surprised me in the sense that I, I never, I guess I never thought that something could physically harm me. Yeah, it, it, that is frightening. I mean, it's one thing to be afraid and have something scare you and that kind of thing. And, you know, sometimes that could be kind of fun, like you said. But, uh, you know, when things start causing physical harm, you know, that's 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 a spooky thing. Well, I really thank you for taking so many uh, uh, time, so much time to speak with us tonight. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. I think we might have a question here or two. So let me see here. Uh, did the guitar make any noise before the explosion? I'm thinking string tension could have caused it. That would have made a noise and would have had to tighten several strings at once. So was there any noises before? Uh, no, because we we did consider that as far as like the strings being too tight. Um, but I mean, that was a good, I played that guitar every day. So it wasn't something where the strings would be too tight and it definitely didn't make any noise before. And it snapped like the, the, the um, top snapped, the middle snapped, and then the actual like bottom big piece snapped. So it was like three pieces. Uh, Jeff in New Hampshire, sorry if I missed, do you assume the artist is the actual haunt, not the painting, but the painter? I think you addressed it, but if you want to address it again, Amy, because maybe some people join later. Oh, yeah. So I was saying I don't think it's the artist or the, I mean, although the artist does have some pretty spooky dark work, uh, I, I think that it was just the print itself, wherever it came from whatever household it came from before um, or the frame, maybe uh, something that was connected to it. And who knows, you know, like maybe it wasn't even the house before, maybe the house before also dealt with terrible stuff and they got rid of it, you know? So there's really no way to tell exactly the origin, 
but I don't think that it was the actual print, like the painting or the artist. I think that it was a combination of, you know, the, the place that it came from and maybe even the frame itself. Well, uh, Amy, I thank you again so much for sharing your time tonight. Uh, folks were asking, it's virtualcampfiregroup.com. That's virtualcampfiregroup.com. That should take you over there to the Facebook group where you can sign up to be a part of the group. We've got 21,000 members over there, and it's absolutely free, and it's a great place place where people share their questions, their comments. We keep it very respectful. So please do check that out. Amy, thank you so much. And we'll do a little postmortem in a moment. Uh, but first, okay. I've got to finish up some business with folks. So thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. And thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, everyone. And if you like what we did here tonight, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would certainly appreciate it. And that's at youtube.com slash Jim Harold. But I guess if you're watching this, you're already here. So go ahead and hit subscribe, hit like the video, make sure you ring that bell for the notifications. Also, if you found us on YouTube and have no idea who I am or what I do, please check out our podcast, Jim Harold's Campfire and the Paranormal Podcast, and you'll find them wherever you get your podcasts. We thank you so much. We appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed it. We thank Amy again for telling her story. I mean, it's got to be tough when you're dealing with something that actually injured you. So we really appreciate her doing that. And we thank you for tuning in. As always, stay safe and stay spooky. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.